dream of flying is almost as old as humanity. But not until the end of the 19th century did Otto Lilienthal achieve the first sustained human gliding flight modelled on birds. Countless flight attempts followed. A few years later, wind tunnels became part of aviation research. Already in 1931, full-size aircraft were being tested in wind canals in the USA. Today, even small models can be tested very realistically, thanks to purpose-built wind tunnels like the European Transonic Wind Canal in Cologne. Wind tunnels and trial flights are still essential, but with ever more powerful computers, researchers have a third aircraft development tool available – numerical simulation. Numerical simulation is supposed to depict reality as accurately as possible on a computer. But aircraft and their aerodynamic characteristics are extremely complex. Just a cubic millimetre of air contains some 27 quadrillion particles, a 17-digit number. Even today, supercomputers are unable to precisely simulate the behaviour of these air molecules. So instead of considering each separate particle, scientists divide up the space around an airplane into a grid made up of individual cells. The crucial point is that the cells have different sizes. The more precise the data needs to be, the smaller the particular cell. The state of the cells is described by physical quantities like pressure, density and the velocity in the three spatial directions. These data are then used to run a simulation for each individual cell. As the distance from the airplane increases, the accuracy requirements are reduced. Increasing cell size reduces computation time. Nevertheless, for the entire grid, a huge system of millions of mathematical equations is generated. And all these equations have to be solved thousands of times. That enormous calculation effort is far too much for a home computer to manage. Several thousand desktop PCs would be needed for especially complex simulations. Therefore, the German Aerospace Center has a powerful computer available. Its high capabilities make it possible for scientists to carry out the required calculations. When the simulation has been run, the behaviour of air packets near the airplane can be described for every grid cell. By this means the flow characteristics of an airplane can be visualised in advance on a computer and its aerodynamic behaviour selectively improved. Streamlines can also be pictured using this data, for example to make visible the swirls that arise at wingtips. How the engine influences the airstream, and thus the aerodynamics, can also be investigated and optimised. Thanks to simulation, changes to the airplane can be made virtually and their effects immediately made visible and evaluated. Numerical simulation has become a powerful tool in aviation research and for the aviation industry. But scientists dream of producing a digital maiden flight. If computing capacity continues to grow, this technology will in the future make it possible to design and certify an airplane digitally, thus at low cost and risk, and to have it taking off on a computer for a virtual first flight. <laughs>